there's a, a rich connection for us, and, and I, am, I am thrilled that Roger could be with us today and to, and to share the, the remarkable story of, of, of ASA, and so I turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Maddox, for inviting me to celebrate the life of Asa K. Jennings, my grandfather. Asa was credited with three things. First, he was credited by the ecumenical patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Church with saving 1,250,000 people from being killed by the Turks. The ecumenical patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Church resides in what the Turks call Istanbul the Christians called Constantinople. And the Eastern Orthodox Church today has about 300 million members. The second achievement was Asa was appointed both by Greece and by Turkey as their diplomatic representative at the Treaty of Lausanne. You may remember World War I ended with the Treaty of Paris. The terms of, the, of that treaty were very onerous and they were renegotiated as the Treaty of Lausanne. My grandfather's responsibility was the repatriation of prisoners of war and population exchange. So here are two countries at war with each other who hated each other. Both placed their trust and a man they knew was representing the other side. That's extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. And I'll tell you one little sidelight of that. The Turks said to my grandfather, we'll give you one Greek for each Turk you give us. My grandfather just said, fine. And that's part of the magic of his leadership. The problem was Turkey had thousands of Greeks, and Greece only had a few Turks. So if he went body for body, the Greeks would lose out. But my grandfather just dealt the cards he had. He was non-confrontational. He just said yes. And then what he did is he employed the United States Navy to transport all the prisoners of war in such a way that the Turks could not keep count. The United States Navy played a huge role, it's unknown today, in the saving of all these people. 1,250,000 people was extraordinary to Greece because Greece had a total population then of about 6 million. And Turkey had a population then of about 6 million. So you're talking close to 20% of the population of Greece and of course they all have relatives. So it was big. His third achievement was his largest achievement, according to him. And what that was, he instilled Christian values in a Muslim country. Now that's a big subject, and I don't really have time to talk too much about that, but it turns out to be prophetic. Turkey was the center of the Ottoman Empire, and today Turkey has a population of 77 million. It's a peaceful, prosperous, strong country. But the former Ottoman territories, Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Libya, are still fighting. They're still in turmoil. They never had Asa Jennings. That's the difference. That's the prophetic part of what he did. And that's the Christian values. It's the tolerance that he taught them. Well, who was Asa Jennings? He was born in Ariel, New York, which is just east of Rochester, September 20th, 1877. He was raised on a farm, which meant you worked six days a week. There was no TV, no radio, no cars. You went by horse or foot, and they worked hard in the fields. And I have his diary as a child. How many rows of peas he planted today, or how many bushel baskets he made, or whatever. And Sunday you got up and you went to church for three hours, and then there was the big family meal at midday, and the only social time young people had was Sunday afternoon. That was life in uh, the community. And his, his friends, his whole community revolved around church, helping each other. Somebody was putting up a bar and everybody went and helped. So helping others was a big part of his life. Back in those days, people prayed every day and they read the Bible every day, something that people don't seem to have time for today. And I would say to you, you, you still could say a little prayer when you wake up in the morning before you get out of bed or a little prayer before you go to sleep. Muslims stop and pray five times a day, no matter where they are, even if they drive a taxi cab. But we don't seem to have time for that. Asa was quick to smile 
He had infectious personality. One person said that when he walked into the room, it was like the lights went on. He was non-confrontational, but he was not timid. He also drank wine. Back in an era when Methodists signed a pledge card not to <laughs> take any alcohol. My grandmother, Amy Will, who was from actually originally Camden, was a teetotaler. And she would go ballistic when my grandfather drank wine. And my grandfather's response was, Amy, Jesus Christ drank wine, why can't I? He was his own man. He was also exceedingly humble. The head of the European YMCA for which he worked wrote to the head of the United States YMCA saying, he is withal modest and hesitates to report things that seem to be telling of his own accomplishments. Asa believed in giving credits to, other, to others as a way of getting their shoulder to the wheel. A man by the name of Barrett Burhans, who worked for my grandfather and still leaving Christian values in Turks, wrote to his uncle in 1931, Altogether, he's something of a genius, and his particular abilities are in making friends and convincing others that he is right. In 1902, my grandparents were married. My grandmother had worked for a lawyer in Utica, and my grandfather worked for the YMCA there. 1904, he contracted Pott's disease, which is a form of tuberculosis, and he suffered from Pott's disease terribly from 1904 to 1906. My grandmother, Amy Will Jennings, who's buried here in Cleveland, wrote, Mr. Jennings never again regained a normal temperature after a year of terrible suffering. For two years, Mr. Jennings wore plaster Paris cast. A large cold abscess formed in the left lung with such pressure on the lung that it was almost impossible to breathe, except as he lay with his head in an open window. This abscess from the spine drained out through the left lung which eventually left him with only 45% breathing capacity. Difficult breathing overtaxed his heart. It was enlarged, and it was pushed to one side by the curved spine, which caused cardiac asthma. He felt as though he was being hung. Those are the words of my grandmother. Asa, my grandfather, removed the cast himself against the advice of his doctors and his spine collapsed five inches, so he's only five foot two inches tall. He was now disfigured, shrunken, and had a very distinctive appearance. And I will suggest to you that was a red flag. That's the first indication of providence. All through his life, he was very bothered by that deformed back, but he never complained. However, when my father would stand with rounded shoulders, my grandfather would whack him in the back to make him stand up straight. And if my brother, whose name is Asa K. Jennings, or I slouched, our father would whack us in the back. And I might have whacked my sons in the back a few times. Do you have faith? Do you believe in the power of God? Asa Jennings had faith. Amy wrote, I took him to the Syracuse General Hospital. On Saturday, we had a council of doctors who said Mr. Jennings was tubercular through and through, lungs, throat, and bowels, that he might live a few weeks or months, but all I could do was to keep him comfortable. Over 20 doctors told her that. How is she going to tell him such terrible news? She said she cried and prayed all night, and she opened the Bible. She said it ran to St. John 11.4. St. John says, The sickness is not to end in death, but is for the honor of God, that through it the Son of God may be honored. Is that providence? Is that faith? Amy wrote, The opinion of the doctors did not concern Asa. Asa said to Amy, I cannot die yet, for I feel I have great work to do, and I must go see Jerusalem. Now this is a guy who only traveled from Rochester to Utica in his whole life, and he's on his deathbed, but he's going to Jerusalem. Wow. Ask yourself, do you believe in providence? Do you believe in the benevolent guidance of God 